Michael Kroger, Donald Trump <laughs> and the impeachment inquiry, of course, uh, mm. rolls on. I feel like this is always in the eyes of the beholder, but um, being described in some parts as explosive testimony from Gordon Sondland. He is someone that was a Trump donor. He was a hand-picked ambassador. He says there was a quid pro quo. Well, I disagree with the reporting. The headlines in some of the reports saying this is explosive and bombshell, I don't think it is in the slightest. I mean, in his written death position, and a barrister once told me, beware, beware the witness who changes his sworn testimony. So in, this, in the first instance, this fellow said there was no quid pro quo. He said in a telephone conversations he's had with Trump, Trump never said to him there's a quid pro quo. Never. Uh, he denied that. And when asked today... Uh, what's the evidence that Trump requested this? He said, it was my own personal guess. So, so as far as Trump's concerned, and this is not about Giuliani, this is about Trump, there is no evidence that Trump asked him this. In fact, exactly the opposite. Trump said to him, I don't want a quid pro quo. So how the headlines can conclude that this is bombshell testimony from this witness is... is um, beggar's belief because Trump specifically told him the exact opposite, Tom. But Michael, didn't so he tell him that after it had there. come out? I thought that phone call where he said not a quid pro quo was after it had started to come out and he was trying to cover himself. No, the, the phone call was in September. He said the conversations yes. he had with Trump, Trump never, has never said to him, in the few conversations he's had, Trump never said to this guy there's a quid pro quo, I want something. He never said that. And when asked, you know, well, what's your evidence for saying that Trump wanted this, he said, oh, I've just drawn that conclusion from discussions with others. So if it's a bombshell, it's a bombshell in the other direction. He's not saying at all that Trump told him this. He's saying Trump didn't tell me that. Tom, what I found extraordinary today, talking about what Michael's saying on the coverage of it, CNN had a fascinating panel which included John Dean from Watergate fame oh and Carl God. Bernstein, where they were comparing Sonderland to the John Dean evidence that brought down Nixon and the fact, no, he wasn't really as good a witness as John Dean was in the White House. I mean, it is beyond parody at this stage. It is extraordinary. Mm. Yeah, and uh, like I've got to say, it's increasingly hard to sort of um, keep a track of proceedings. I know you were talking about which phone call and so on. I know there was one in July. Uh, anyway, I mean, I, I, we know what we're at with here, that no one's going to be shifted in, in the Senate. I mean, at the end of every day, it's sort of divided along partisan lines. And there was an interesting uh, point made earlier, Michael Kroger, that if you look at the TV ratings, they're all sort of watching one network or the other, and you've got um, CNN in the middle struggling to attract viewers because it's apparently, you know, not calling out for Team Red or Team Blue enough. Hmm. Well, as we know, Fox is the preferred medium of the, you know, Trump supporters. Uh, and if you don't have an opinion, a bit like Jeremy Corbyn on Brexit, he doesn't even have an opinion on what, what should happen over there. Uh, when there's a partisan, you know, position, uh, no one favours much the umpire's view. So it's like going to a football or rugby match and... Uh, expecting some of the crowd to barrack for the umpire. No, they, don't, they tend not to do that. People have got fixed positions and, um, uh, yeah, so that's obviously why they're not doing so well in these circumstances. Tom, so. maybe one indicator will be the ratings against uh, the impeachment today. We had at the very same time the Democratic debate, 10 Democratic <laughs> candidates. Mm. So mm. maybe the ratings for either of those, I'd say the impeachment was probably more sensational. We're getting a bit blasé. There was no nothing spectacular in the, um, in the yeah. Democratic debate. I think uh, Elizabeth Warren predictably called uh, Trump a criminal in the White House. Joe Biden stumbled and waffled a lot. I don't think he helped himself there. None of them did any good, but it is interesting that it was up against it. So the American public has, if they are convinced there's a problem by watching the impeachment, if they turned over to the Democratic debate, I'm not sure that would have filled them with hope. Joe Biden's a fascinating one, how he still stays so high in the polls and, and, and seems to really be making regular stuff-ups, not aware of what he said previously, trying to correct the record today, Janine, and being found to have said well, the, the opposite to what he claimed. I mean, Having it's, covered it's, it's, Joe Biden's it's, presidential campaigns for 30 years, yeah. it's par for the course. This is what does him well, in every like time. It's dynasty without having one. Like, it's just, if you've, you know, you get a good Q score or it's recognition or you've been there before and you get, you get marks.
Well, there are some polls that show he is dropping down. Um, so it depends. There's so many candidates, so many polls, such a lack of hope. Um, I, you know, I, I think he is just behaving to form, which is why many people are concerned. And it's why Michael Bloomberg was looking on the sidelines. He'd always apparently said that he didn't want to um, take votes away from Joe Biden. But he's looking, obviously, and shaking his head, seriously mm. doubting whether this guy can get up. Mm. I mean, he was, Tom, in the mid-30s there for, for a long yeah. time, mm. and now he's sort of high teens. And as Janine said, um, you know, he's made <laughs> these stuff-ups. I mean, unfortunately, rightly or wrongly, during his career he's done these things. Janine, wasn't he the one that uh, paraphrased Neil, stole that line from Neil Kinnock, why am I the first Biden in a generation, which forced him to res re resign from uh, an earlier presidential bid when he stole those words from... Yes, Kinnick plagiarism. Neil Kinnock, that's right, Kinnick, he plagiarised. Yeah. But, I mean, so, there's been gaffes oh, all look, along. Yeah, look, I, 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 he, he just... He, he, he's looking his age, unfortunately. We don't want to be ageist here, Tom, because we're not ageists here on uh, on this station. But, no. uh, you know, he is he is struggling. And the fact that his ratings have basically halved, or the down 40%, um, Bernie Sanders is... That the, the angry, you know, the angry burn the house down approach to whole Western civilization is... I think mm. wearing thin, which is why even though Warren's under attack of being a mad lefty, she's you know still there as a, as a really strong candidate. But Mayor Pete has sort yeah. of come up through the middle uh, and done what. Is he the one that I, I asked Janine about this earlier in the week, Michael, and she said uh, it'd have to be Bloomberg because he's a real billionaire. Is, uh, <laughs> if he runs, who would worry Donald Trump? <laughs> and he's older well, than Joe Biden. Can I just point out that's how bad things are. Bloomberg would actually be the oldest. He's very inexperienced, but don't forget the Republicans picked a, uh, the Democrats picked a community organizer some years ago, and he uh, who didn't have much experience in <laughs> the legislature, and he he tended to win. Um, you know, Beto, Beto O'Rourke didn't catch fire, but Cory Booker's not not really in the race, so it's going to be one of those four. And you think he's got the least negatives. Uh, you know, the other three, the established candidates, seem to have more negatives than mm. positives, which means that that's why his vote has has increased. He hasn't stuffed things up. He's calm. He's measured. He's he, he, you know, he's, he's um, um, you know, 37, uh, he's married, he's gay, he's, um, you know, progressive views, which will help him within the Democratic Party. Um, but he hasn't been in the legislature a long time. But as I said, neither was, uh, you know, neither was um, a former president. Um, well, so, uh, it, uh, Michael, nor was the current president. Let's not forget him. No, he, he had a short period in the legislature too, uh, Janine, oh, he's zero. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that, that's not a... That's, so it that's doesn't not preclude a, you these days? No, it doesn't. And, and of course, the Republicans, as we know, belted Obama for months, over a year in that campaign by saying he's had no serious legislative Ooh. experience. His major responsibility was organising locally uh, as a community person, yeah. and that's not fit for the White House. And that, think, White House, that... And that didn't get in the bar. No, I think that mould is shattered now in pieces <laughs> in terms agree. of legislative experience because it's a whole circus anyway.